Welcome back to Breakfast Central. Now we're talking about the IMPOB leader. The Court of Appeal in Nigeria's capital, Abuja, yesterday dropped charges against uh, the Nigerian government preferred against the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB. Now, consequently, the appropriate legal options for the authorities will be exploited and communicated accordingly to the public. The Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice has received the news of this decision and for the avoidance of doubt, they have said that by the verdict of the court, Kanu was only discharged and not acquitted. Now, this decision was handed down by a court of appeal on single issues that borders on rendition. The federal government says that it will consider all available options open to it in the judgment whilst pursuing determination of pre-rendition issues. Now let's tell you more on Nnamdi Kanu in this report. The 55-year-old political economist shot into limelight through his broadcast on Radio Biafra, where he called for the restoration of the defunct Republic of Biafra which existed within the Civil War period between 1967 and 1970. The birth of the indigenous people of Biafra in 2014 provided a vehicle for his mobilization among the people of present-day Southeast and part of Nigeria's Niger Delta. On the 14th of October 2015, Nam Kanu was arrested in Lagos on treason charges. He was detained for over one year and was freed on bail on the 28th of April 2017. After violating some of the bail conditions, including ban on public speaking, Namdi Kano, hiding under the military oppression, jumped bail and disappeared from Nigeria and resurfaced weeks later in Israel. The IPOB leader continued his agitation and separatist calls. He announced the formation of the Eastern Security Network and was reported to have solicited for arms from groups to wage war against Nigeria. On the 29th of June 2021, Nigerian government announced that the IPOB leader has been rearrested and returned to Nigeria for continuation of trial. From July 2021, IPOB issued a sit at home order in all states of the southeastern Nigeria every Monday in solidarity with their leader, an order that was later hijacked by faceless groups after IPOB directed an end to sit at home. Even government couldn't help the situation. And for 16 months, Namdekan was held by the Nigerian government, leading to a heightened tension in the southeast region. Frequent attack on security posts and checkpoints by unknown gunmen became the order of the day. Prison facilities were not spared and suspected criminals freed. The number of people killed by armed gangs in the region within this period is unknown at the moment, but there is a belief that it runs into hundreds including state security operatives. While these lasted, governments at different levels and their agents seemed docile. With this order of the Court of Appeal for Namdi Kanu to be freed, will the once peaceful and bubbly southeastern Nigeria know peace again? Ozonna Ononye, reporting for News Central. Now let's bring in constitutional lawyer, Mr. C.C. Chukudi. He joins us live from Oka Anambra State to further explain what this means. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the show this morning. Good morning to you. I am happy to join in this live program. All right. I uh, would like you to help us make sense of what the actual position is. There have been mixed reports and mixed reactions, of course. Whilst um, the government, on one hand, is saying that he's been discharged and not acquitted because uh, there have been references made to the fact that Nigeria is a signatory to the African Union Convention, which he ratified in April 2022. And unfortunately, the manner in which Nambikanu was uh, brought from Kenya to Nigeria, there have been conversations about it being an extraordinary rendition, uh, not following the proper process for an extradition. Can you help us make sense of it? What really should have been the actual process and was it followed? Uh, of course, uh, from the decisions of the Court of Appeal yesterday, the three-man panel, it was obvious that uh, the law that was set in motion against Nam Bekanu was not properly so as it ought to be. We have always said that in the Lego Palace, you cannot stand something on nothing and expect it to stand. The whole procedure will be nullity. In fact, what the Court of Appeal held yesterday was that the procedure upon which it is currently 
being tried. It's nullity because it has not, the federal government has not complied with the condition precedent warranting his being brought into the Nigeria for further prosecution in any time. So the essence of it is that the, he has been discharged. Why it is not fully acquitted is that Nam Dekano has not gone into full trial of the offenses which we are alleged to have committed by him. When a person has not been fully tried, the acquittal process may not be declared because there will be likelihood of his rearrest when the condition precedent as laid down by the rules or the laws of the federation has been complied with. Until those laws are complied with, it will be difficult to place him in a full criminal trial warranting either acquittal or conviction, as the case may be. So, so what the Court of Appeal held yesterday was that it is, he was discharged because the condition precedent as contained in the Extradition Act of 2018 was not complied with. Okay, well... Uh, let's now talk about the response by the Attorney General of the, of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, SAN, um, who has said that, you know, Nabdikano has simply been uh, discharged but not acquitted. And, of course, uh, they will continue with other legal um, uh, proceedings, um, you know, on other cases and other charges that, you know, are placed against him. So can you help break up, uh, uh, this down? You know, what do you think happens next, uh, seeing this response from the Attorney General of, of uh, uh, the Federation here in Nigeria? It is expected that upon the pronouncement of the Court of Appeal, now the canon will be released. And then the extradition procedures will be commenced by the, by the federal government in compliance with the extant laws and provisions of extradition act. Where such is not complied with, it will be difficult. So what the Attorney General of the Federation said is partially correct. I'm partially not correct because when he says that they will not, we will com continue the extradition process, it must be first thing first, which is that he must be released from detention. One, two, he will be allowed to proceed back to the place where he was before. The status quo before he was arrested must be restored to and maintained. That is to say, that particular extradition process must be fully complied with in the sense that the necessary laws, the necessary applications, the necessary rules and regulations which, warrant, which is guaranteed under the extradition law must be complied with. So in essence, he is discharged, but not fully acquitted because he has not been tried fully of the offenses leveled against him. You know that before now, Nandekan was facing a trial before he was granted bail. And that trial was not fully con uh, concluded before that bail was granted. And now the essence of which is that he would be brought back into the country following the extradition process as laid down under the rules, under the laws of the Federation, on which his trial may likely commence. That is the procedure. Uh, Without such. Uh difficult let, let's talk about you know make the flaws or lack of the you know of it in our judicial system now Namdi Kanu was arrested in Kenya in June 2021 of course he was fleeing uh, fleeing charges that have been le leveled against him this matter has been going on for a while now why has it taken it this long for us to realize that there was a fundamental flaw that has ensured that this case returns to status quo, sort of taking us back as opposed to, you know, taking the case further. So what it seems, just like you said, you cannot put something on nothing and expect it to stand. Is it maybe revealing a flaw in our legal system and how can this be fixed if so? You see, one problem we have in this country is that everybody interprets the law according to the conscience which he possesses. The law is there for people to read and understand. However, what took us so long is the wrong interpretation given to the provisions of that particular extant law. Why? Because they think that by mere fact that that procedure has been circumvented, the law or the court will look beyond that 
having secured the main person, having secured the evidence, there is this provision of the law that says evidence is admissible in court. It is immaterial how that evidence was procured. However, if this does not comply with where there is express provisions of the law, saying that a condition precedent must be observed, if that condition precedent is not observed, that particular procedure will not stay, will not start. That is the provision in the case of Mark 4 against UAC, where the law, the, law, the court held that you cannot place something on nothing and expect it to stand. The whole procedure will be null, and it will be void at the issue. So what matters in this procedure is that the, the, the attorney general, the prosecutors who were handling the case, deemed it fit that perhaps they have circumvented the provisions of the stand law. It would no matter no longer. It will no longer matter where the person was obtained, how he was secured, how he was arrested. What matters is that he's already before the law before the court and should face his trial. But the law says, no, you have to obey this important procedure before proceeding to this man's trial. And that is a very welcome development to our own law and, jury, and jurisprudence, which allows the, process, the police, the prosecutors, the attorney general, the enforcers of Nigerian laws to know that there is need to comply with laws even before the procedure of trial commences. All right. I, I want to, you know, also get your response to, you know, to those who, you know, have uh, insinuations that this might also have uh, political undertones in the build up to the 2023 elections. Um, you know, what, what would your response be to that? And of course, you know, do you maybe agree that there might be anything like that? I... I I do not, I, I didn't get to you properly. Well, I'm asking, you know, with regards to those who have made insinuations that there might be political undertones to this um, uh, court ruling, uh, with regards to the 2023 elections that are, of course, just a few months away, uh, what's your response to those, you know, those thoughts? And, you know, maybe also do you agree that there might be some politics being played, you know, in, in, in the mix here? What I am to say, I don't know whether you can see me. I just love Yo, the Just line. go ahead. We can hear we can you. Hear That's you. good enough. Oh, very well. Uh, the point I am trying to make, whether there is political undertone or not, what is important is that the law has been pronounced by the law. Nothing like that. There is nothing political undertone in the provisions and the rulings of the court. Before the political under, uh, procedure starts, that before the election uh, was in the atmosphere, this procedure has been set in motion. He has been arrested for 16 months now. He was under detention and his trial has commenced before now. There is nothing as political undertone when the law is expressed and can be read and understood by any common man in the community. That is the position. So if the provisions of the law are very clear, and the Court of Appeal, in trying to uphold the tenacity and the content of the law, made their provisions in line with the provisions of the law, there is nothing like political about it. I, of, the, of, the, of, of a person, has this opinion that if political undertone was to be observed, there would be an, uh, any other provision other than the legal provision provision in order to release him. There is this provision which is contained in our constitution, which is called knowledge prosecution. You can nullify prosecution. That is when political undertone comes to play in the trial of a person. So the attorney general will enter what is called a knowledge prosecution. Absolutely. In trying to stop the further proceeding. All right. Unfortunately, we, we've run out of time and we, of course, would like to have you back again. But thank you so much for speaking extensively as to the legal implication of the court ruling yesterday. We look forward to having you join us again.